You name it, we do it. Every day throughout the five boroughs, some 290,000 New York City employees come to work. To support those who live, work, and play in New York City, we build infrastructure, fight fires, ensure public safety, educate children, maintain parks, and help low-income families on their way to self-sufficiency. These are just a few of the things we do as city employees. It takes a lot of energy to run the city at a cost of over $800 million. Just as you do at home, the city has taken a number of steps to save energy and money. That includes energy efficient lighting upgrades, retrofits to heating and cooling systems, moving towards hybrid and alternative fuel vehicles in the city fleet, and sustainable building operations training for city engineers, just to name a few programs. We even have a sustainability mascot named Birdie, who helps promote actions that make New York City cleaner and greener. Individual city employees can make a big difference as well. Little changes that we each make in our daily routines can all add up to big savings. Saving energy in New York City, it's all about us. Hi, I'm Matthew Modine. We all know how important it is to save energy. As a homeowner in the city, it's at the top of my list. After all, when you pay your own energy bills, every kilowatt saved keeps money in your pocket. But these savings extend to your workplace as well. Every light turned off results in real dollar savings for the city. Just as importantly for all New Yorkers, whether you live or work here, it protects our environment. It makes for a cleaner and greener New York. Plan YC, the city's strategy to make New York City greener and greater, aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that result from municipal energy consumption 30% by 2017. While the city continues to make energy efficiency upgrades to its buildings and fleet, we also know that your participation is crucial to meet our goals. After all, together we are New York City, and together we can green YC. So let's watch, listen, and learn and become better stewards of our resources and save energy for the future. It's up to all of us. And while we each may work in a different location, there are a lot of things we control and have in common. Like turning off lights and closing doors to save energy. And while we may not directly control the heating and air conditioning, we can take a few simple steps to make sure our workspaces are more efficient. Altogether, small actions in these areas can make a big difference. None of them are hard. But it does take a few minutes of thought when we come to work and go about our jobs. All we need to do is think about our workplace like it belongs to us and how we can do our jobs using less energy. And if we each do our part together, we can make a difference. So here we go. A few simple, easy steps that we can take to help New York City save energy and money. One of the easiest things we can all do is one of the most obvious. Shut off anything we're not using. At the top of that list will be the lights in any room that's not being used. If there's no one in there, or if you're done and leaving, it takes just a second to flip the switch. Are you done in there, Birdie? Then there's our computers, or more to the point, the monitors. While some of the newer ones have power saving modes, many of the older ones don't. And screen savers take up just as much power as if you're working. So if you're not gonna be at your computer for an extended period of time, and certainly overnight, even if your computer needs to stay on, it's a good idea to turn your monitor off. It takes just a few seconds to power it back up when you return. Likewise for printers. Because these can take a few minutes to warm up, you have to be smart about it. I mean, especially if one's being shared by a bunch of people in an office, you don't want to turn it off after every use. But if no one needs it, especially overnight, flipping the switch is the way to go. The same goes for any task lighting at your desk. If you're going to be gone for a while, or at the end of the day, turn it off and save energy. And it's no different for copiers. On when you need it, off when you're done. If we do it with lights, printers, copiers, whatever we don't need, we can make a big difference. Right, Mark? Right, Michael. If it's got a switch and you don't need it, shut it off.
we all tend to think that if we're not using something or if it's fully charged, that it's not consuming any power. And for some things, that's true. But for others, well, not so much. Sure, some things need to stay plugged in even when they're not on. For example, a microwave oven might have a clock and a modem needs to stay connected to phone or data signals. But just look at this power strip. It has two power supplies plugged into it. One is to charge a digital camera, and the other is to charge a cell phone. That's fine, but once the items are charged, the chargers keep drawing electricity, even though the energy isn't being used. This is called vampire load. So once your electronics are fully charged, you'll save energy by unplugging the chargers. And if there are other things that can be unplugged because they're not being used, you should do that as well. But grabbing the cord and yanking it is dangerous. Whenever you plug or unplug something, do it safely. And be careful if the outlet is near the floor or blocked by furniture. Safety and energy savings, that's what you call a win-win. Absolutely, Nigel. You can't do better than that. Now, let's see how else we can save energy and money. One of the biggest use of energy is keeping our workspace comfortable. So we cool spaces in the summer and warm them in the winter. But there's a lot we can do beyond just turning a thermostat up and down. We want our systems to work more efficiently, use less energy, and still keep us comfortable. First, we need to take the time to give the systems a chance to function properly. Clean off anything covering ducts and vents so the air can circulate. It's the same thing if you have radiators or air conditioning units. If they're blocked, they can't heat or cool properly. So what you should do is make sure to move anything out of the way that is blocking the airflow. That will help keep you comfortable. You should also use the blinds on your windows. In the summer, they can block out the heat. In the winter, open them up to let in the warmth and the light. In the same way, keep doors shut. Closed doors keep cooled or heated air inside, which saves energy. If you do have a thermostat that you control, remember the city's guidelines. Heat to be set no higher than 68 degrees in the winter. Air conditioning to be set no lower than 78 degrees in the summer. Also make sure the thermostat isn't blocked or that there's something beneath it that could affect the temperature reading, like a coffee maker. And note that electric space heaters are a safety hazard and are prohibited. Opening up a window or fiddling with the thermostat will throw the building system out of calibration. So if you're too hot or too cold, Contact your building engineer or the facility staff so they can adjust the temperature. Wear lighter clothes in the summer and bring a sweater when it gets cold out. Wear that on very hot days called peak load days, your workspace might be slightly warmer. That's because many city buildings reduce air conditioning to help prevent blackouts. It doesn't matter where you work. You can be comfortable. If you help your workplace work for you. Remember when they said that computers would eliminate paper? Boy, were they wrong. Today, it seems that there's more than ever. And all that paper and printing it takes a lot of resources, from paper to ink to energy, all of which costs money. For starters, print double-sided when given the option. Right there, you've cut paper use in half. Now, we all make mistakes. Relax. I'm talking about printing mistakes. We've all been guilty of printing when we shouldn't have. Sometimes we print the wrong thing, or we catch a mistake once we look at the paper. Like you don't spell Monday with two O's. But hey, it happens. So if there's nothing confidential about it, use a mistaken print as scrap paper. Or at the very least, make sure to recycle it. We're big on recycling. Finally, think for a second if you really need to print at all. So much today can be done with electronic files, so print what you need, but only what you need. Printing unnecessarily uses extra paper and ink, which equals energy and money. So let's all try to conserve resources and print smarter. Saving energy isn't hard. It just takes some thought and some small actions. And lots of small actions add up to big results. Our actions as city employees are essential to achieving our sustainability goals. We're working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from municipal operations 30% by 2017. It's an ambitious goal, but one we could achieve if we all work together. It's about making New York City an even better place to live and work. 
That's because energy savings will result in a cleaner environment. And that will mean improved health for us, our families, and all who live, work, and visit New York City. If you want to learn more, contact your agency's energy liaison officer. He or she can help you with energy savings ideas that are specific to you and your workplace and job. So take the time to learn and put into practice the ways that you can make a difference. After all, saving energy in New York City, it's, it's all about us. us.